Hi everyone, this is Professor Nancy Mahan. Today we're going to be going over um, the topic of factoring. And the topic of factoring is super important, as I've mentioned in class, that this is where we get to kind of like, the, if we're on a train going, going up a mountain, this is where we're going to the top of the mountain. And this is where everything that you've been learning builds up to this point, and this point is called factoring. It's the highest point in algebra, meaning we've been trying to get there, and after we get there, we're gonna go on a fast ride down using this tool of factoring. So it's so important that um, in my years of teaching this class, I've noticed that at this point, this is where the class kind of divides into two roads, those that know how to factor and those that don't. And the problem is those that don't know how to factor will not be able to continue on with the class because everything you do moving forward involves factoring. For those who do know how to factor, this is really great because you're gonna do a lot of fun things with factoring in the next few chapters. But it's gonna be a fast ride, so I cannot emphasize the importance of understanding this chapter. Um, so I'm gonna do this video, so again, if I'm going too fast, you can slow it down and follow along at your own pace. But um, on Canvas or on Monday, if you come to class, I printed out the worksheets for you for this with the answer key in the back. So I'm gonna go over the worksheet in this video. Um, if you didn't come on Monday, you could go into Canvas and click on um, Class Worksheets under the Files tab, and you'll be able to find the worksheet. It looks like this, um, Math 130, it's headed, it's for Chapter 4B, and Math 140 is Chapter 6B under Factoring. And your homework for this is due this week, so please, please, please make sure you do not fall behind. If you need any help, please let me know. So at this point, I am going to do a screen sharing um, to um, flip this onto camera mode so you can see what I'm doing via my phone. And screen sharing. All right. So if you've noticed in this worksheet, what you're gonna see here is the, work, the big F word, constantly, the other F word, right? Factor, factor, factor. This whole worksheet has the F word through it. So what does, what does it mean to factor? So let's talk about that definition. First of all, what is a factor, right? So we say, keep throwing it out, but without understanding the term, it's really hard to continue forward with this. So what is a factor? Well, a factor in terms of a noun, so there's a factor as a verb, there's a factor as a noun as well. So as a noun, let's just talk about it in terms of really simple numbers, right? So let's look at four times two is equal to eight. So whenever we have multiplication, the answer for multiplication is always called the, starts with a P, the product. And the things that are being multiplied together to give you the product, these are what we call factors. So factors are the things that we multiply together to give you a product. So factor deals with whenever it deals with multiplication, right? So that's what a factor is. All right, so now that we see that these, this is an example of what a factor is, a factor are the things that are multiplied together to give you a product, let's look at a few other things that are factors. So it doesn't just have to be numbers, it could be actually be things with letters as well. So if I had um, 3x multiplied by 2, and the answer is 6x, the, this is the product again, and these are called factors, right? So factors, again, are things that are multiplied together to give you a product. So it doesn't just have to have numbers, it could have letters in it, but at the same time, factors can also be polynomials, which we just learned about polynomials in the previous chapter. So you had three x plus one multiplied by um, x minus four, right? If you multiply these two together, um, if you use FOIL or whatnot, you get three x squared, minus 12x plus x minus four. And what I did here is I just distributed three x times x is three x squared, three x times negative four is negative 12x, one times x is x, 
and one times negative four is negative four. So I just did that quickly. And this would reduce to three x squared, combine like terms, minus 11x minus four. So again, this is still the product, and but the things that multiply together to give you this product, these are what we call factors. So that's what factors are. Factors are things that are multiplied together to give you products. They could just be numbers, they could be things with letters in them, they could be polynomials that are multiplied together to give you a product. So that's what it factors in terms of a noun. Now what does it mean to be, if when they ask you instruction, if the instruction says to factor something. So when they ask you to factor something, now they're asking you to do something. So in other words, they're using the word factor as a verb. So what does it mean to factor something? So what it means to factor something, really it's called reverse distribution. Distribution, right? So you're doing the reverse of distribution. So here, normally we multiply Whenever we see parentheses, we multiply to give us an answer. That's what we've been doing thus far. But now we're going to start with the answer and then we're going to do the reverse. So we're going to start with the answer and we want to find out what are the factors. Find the factors. Find the things that give us this product. So if you notice here, say in number um, three and number four, they give you basically the product, right? They give you the end product and they ask you to write it down in terms of two or more things, normally two things that multiply together to give you this. So how do you, so the question is how do you do that? So this multiplied by these, these are called factors. So factors and factors, right? So what are the things that multiply together to give you the product? So it's the reverse of distribution. So that's basically the end, that's basically what it means to factor. Factor means to rewrite a product in terms of polynomials that are being multiplied together. So before we get there, we're gonna talk about something called the greatest common factor. So let's look at this. We have 11 m to the fourth and 14 m cubed. And they're asking us to first find the greatest common factor. And this will help us to get to this part. So number one and two will help us to get to three and four. So first I ask myself, what does 11 and 14 have in common in terms of a factor? Well, go, let's get back to that F word again. Let's look at the number 11. What are the factors of 11? What are things multiplied together that will give me 11? And the only option I can think of is one times 11 will give me 11. So one and 11 are factors of 11. And then I look at the number 14. What are the factors of 14? Well, one times 14 will give me 14. So those are factors. What other factors are there? Well, two times seven will give me 14, right? And then I go through the list. Does three multiply by anything give me 14? No, four, no, five, six, seven, eight, nine, et cetera. So basically these are the only factors of 14. Things multiply together to give you 14. One, 14, two, seven. These are considered factors of 14. These are considered factors of 11. So what is the greatest common factor? What do they both have in common out of this list and this list? That's the biggest number. Well, the biggest number they have in common is just the number one. So the greatest common factor for 11 and 14 is just one, right? So one. And then what is the greatest common factor now of M4 and M3? Well, let's look at the factors of M4. What are things multiplied to give me M4? Well, M times M times M times M will give me M4. These are the factors of M4. What are the factors of M3? Well, the factors of M3 is M times M times M. So what's the greatest factor that they have in common? Well, they both have in common 
three m's, right? So m times m times m, m times m times m, three of them. So the greatest common factor here is m cubed, because m times m times m is, cu is m cubed. So here, when asking what's the greatest common factor of these two terms, I would say it's one m cubed. That's what they both have in common. That's the greatest factor. And we don't really need the when in there. So really the answer would just be m cubed. Now let's make it a little bit harder. Now I have three terms of 12u4, 8u, and 20u cubed. What is the greatest common factor or the GCF, in short, shorthand way of saying it, of these three terms? Well, first I just look at the numbers. So here, just looking at the numbers, I ask myself, so here there's a number 12, there's a number eight, and there's the number 20. What are things multiplied to give me 12? Well, one times 12 will give me 12. What else? Two times six will give me 12. So I just go through the numbers. One, two, three times what will give me 12? Three times four will give me 12. And then four times three will give me 12. I already wrote it. Five, nope, six already is here. Six times two, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So that's it. So the factors of 12, you could write it as one, two, three, four, six, and 12. I'm just writing these numbers in numerical order. These are the factors of 12. What are the factors of eight? What things multiply to give you eight? Well, one times eight gives you eight. Two times four gives you eight. Does three times anything give you eight? No. Does four times anything give you eight? Yeah, four times eight. Well, there it is, it showed up ready. So I know I can't really keep going with this. So the factors of eight are one, two, four, and eight. So I'm just rewriting all these numbers here in a list. What are the factors of 20? Well, one times 20, the most obvious ones. Two times 10 gives me 20. Three times anything give me 20? Nope. Four times anything? Yep. Four times five gives me 20. Does five times anything? Yep, five times four. And then it'll just keep repeating after that. So I can stop there. So the factors of 20 are one, two, four, five, 10 and 20. I basically, again, just rewrote these numbers in order from smallest to least. So now when I compare these three lists of numbers, I ask what, is, what do they all have in common that's the greatest number? So the greatest number they have in common appears to be the number four, right? So they all have four in common. So that's kind of the long way of doing it, but when you're just learning how to find out the GCF, you might want to just write it out just to see what's the greatest number they have in common, which is four. Or you could look at 12, eight, and 20 and say, what's the biggest number that's divisible by all of these, right? What's, so you can ask yourself, what's the biggest number that's divisible by 12, eight, and 20? So the biggest number that's divisible by all of these is the number four. So you could think of it that way, or you could just write out the things that multiply together to give you 12, things that multiply together to give you eight, and the things that multiply together to give you 20, and the biggest number, the biggest factor out of all this is the GCF, right? Greatest common factor. So that's in terms of the number. And again, the first time, a few times you do this, it might take a while, but after that, it'll be a lot easier because you kind of just see it. 12, 8, and 20, what's the biggest number they have in common that's divisible is the number 4. All right, and then now I look at the letters. I have U4, U, and U cubed. So U4, U, and U cubed, what is the greatest common factor of all of these? Well, notice in number 1 when we ask yourself that question, out of M4 and M3, the greatest common factor was M3 because that's what they had in common. So they had three M's in common. So the long way of doing this is you write down the factors of U4. U, 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 U. Factors of U, it's just U. 
factors of u cubed is u, 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 three of them. What do they all have in common? They all have in common just a u. So the GCF here is just u, right? So in other words, it's basically the variable with the smallest exponent wins the GCF. So four, one, and three, what do they all have in common? u to the first power. So u to the first power is a GCF of the u's. So combining that together, the GCF is gonna be four u. So you would write that as four u.